Hello and welcome to all the men and women of the West. I'm Joe. And this is going to be me flying solo today. But Dan also wishes you all a happy Hobbit Day. Today's topic is Turin Tarambar and Aragorn Elisar. Mirror images and opposites. Lord of the Rings versus Silmarillion. Whose hero is greater? In Lord of the Rings, there's an important point in the chapter that depicts Elrond's council, one where Turin Tarambar is mentioned. Frodo is mentioned as being an Elfrin of equal value to him and a few others. Now, while many would not exactly qualify Turin as the greatest of friends to have, given his particular history, for those unfamiliar with it, Turin was the son of Hurin, who lived in the First Age. He was a man who was raised for a time by Elu Thingol, the king of Doriath. Turin, at the end of his fosterage, was to cause the death of one of Thingol's counselors. Then, fearing judgment, he fled to the wilds, where he became a bandit for a time until Beleg Strongbow came along to fix him up and reprimand him and guide him back to righteousness. After this, Turin took to praying only upon Morgoth's forces, took refuge with the petty dwarf Mim, who later betrayed him, Turin was thus captured by orcs, was rescued by Beleg, but as the elf's sword nicked him, he grew afraid in the darkness, wrestled the sword free, and slaughtered his friend. After this, he fled to Nargofrond, where he served Orodreth, father of Gilgalad. Really, really badly, though, with his advice leading to the destruction of Nargofrond. Wherefore, he failed to save Orodreth's beloved daughter, fled into the wilderness, and in time ended up meeting a woman with amnesia, who was really his sister, married her, and then later ended up killing his draconic tormentor, Glaurung. After Glaurung revealed to his sister wife the truth, she threw herself off a cliff, and Turin was in the end to commit suicide. Naturally, I'm glossing over a lot. There's a lot of details to the story that I've not covered, such as Turin's journey back home, and that's what caused him to not be able to save the princess of Nargofrond. But, you know, I'm glossing over a lot. Honestly, his story is probably the most depressing in all, all the legendarium, so there's good reason to gloss over. Otherwise, you know, this will just be me crying and sobbing over Turin. Like a little girl. And yet, there are some striking similarities to the adventures of another great hero. One whom fans of the movies and fans of the Lord of the Rings novel will know and recognize immediately. Aragorn. Aragorn, like Turin, was raised in an elvish court. In his case, it is his ancestral uncle of sorts, Elrond, who raised him as a foster son. So that Aragorn's father figure is Elrond. Elrond, like Thingol, evidently comes to love his charge a great deal and does not wish him any harm. This is in contrast to the movie where he seems to hold some sort of dislike of Aragorn. Well, then again, he just seems to dislike everyone. But in the book, he doesn't. He likes Aragorn. And he generally likes his guest. And does know how to smile. Uh... Rivendell and Doriath are both protected realms that evil dares not enter, and are probably the safest places in the whole of the world for our heroes. The chief difference being that Aragorn embraces that protection, mostly for the sake of the hobbits he has come to love in the short time he has traveled with them, whereas Turin rejects it. Turin and Aragorn both left the protection of their father figures at an early age, and took to a life of hardship and fighting as rangers of sorts. Both were to experience extreme loneliness, darkness, and sorrow during their time in the wilds, both men being capable of incredible melancholies, as shown in their respective tales. Though there is a difference. Turin was at his core an insecure person, while Aragorn was always firmly confident of his place as king, and never doubted that it was his destiny. He knew he had to become king, and in this he did not hesitate. It was only when his hobbit friends were in danger that he hesitated and hemmed and hawed. Both men were to face rescue of a sorts, 
by an elf hero of some renown, Beleg and Glorfindel, respectively. In the case of Aragorn, though, Glorfindel thankfully lived to tell the tale, as, you know, Turin kind of leads to the death of Beleg. At, well, Turin does kill Beleg, I should say. Both men in their tales took refuge then with the elves, with the main difference being that Aragorn's council was much more level-headed and more well thought out than the terrible, idiotic advice of Turin, son of Hurin, who had advised engaging Morgoth's forces in open combat, rather than in Fabian tactics that had proven so successful hitherto then for Nargothrond. Both men go on to do battle in a battle which sees a king perish. In the case of Turin, it is Orodreth. In the case of Aragorn, it is Theoden. And this is where the story splits off. Aragorn gathers his men in what forces he can and makes for the gates to Mordor, meets the mouth of Sauron, reprimands him, and sends him scampering back to his master. Turin, on the other hand, faces defeat and humiliation, and would, even in victory over Glaurung, face defeat on a spiritual level and collapse onto his own sword. Both men live in the shadow of another hero, who is a relative of theirs, Aragorn lives in the shadow of Isildur, and Turin that of Baron, and also Hurin. The difference is that where Turin was overcome by this, and the shadows within, Aragorn embraced it and sought to redeem the name of his amazing heroic ancestor. And this gets at the heart of the difference between the two of them. Turin is a man predisposed towards suspicion of others, and a certain melancholy that doesn't allow for him to embrace others. Well, Aragorn is the opposite. He loves the company of other men and enjoys friendship and treasures it above all other things. He's not cold by nature like Turin is. He's warm and genial. Personality-wise, Aragorn, as has been pointed out before, is much more like Conan than Turin. Like Conan, he succeeds by virtue of his heroism, his goodness, and his chivalry while also relying on his innate cunning and the friendship of others. Turin is destined for failure because he only relies on himself and cuts himself off from others. So this gets at the heart of why Aragorn is ultimately greater. He doesn't let defeats, mistakes, and distractions stop him or slow him down. He has the drive to keep on pressing forward, to obstinately never accept defeat, all while relying on the talents of others, and on the opinions and counsels of others. He succeeds and is the greater hero because he is bold when he must be, and wise and patient when he also must be. He surpasses Turin quite easily as the greatest, or at least greater hero of the two, which is a bit of a shame, as Turin had enormous potential as a hero. He could well have been the greatest with a little more sense, a little more patience, a little more willingness to heed the counsel of others, and a little more emotional fortitude. He could have come out of things a wiser and greater man than he had been previously, but he always chose the worst path presented before him, because he lacked faith in others, and in some ways he lacked it in himself also. Now, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that like and that subscribe button, and also to check out our Substack, where this video has also been published as a script. So you can often read some video scripts of ours over on Substack, as we tend to write and cover a lot of Tolkienian content. And just to give you forewarning, our next video will be a Silmarillion podcast in a while. We're still reading through the chapter as we got to gather notes and whatnot. And also do remember to check out every other video on this playlist, as they're quite good. And, well, have a happy Hobbit Day, everyone.